Okay, what's up guys? We are back at the third video and what I have right in front of me is a malicious Microsoft Office document and what we are going to be doing is we're going to be doing static analysis and static analysis is basically studying the behavior of the malware before we execute it and this will help us get an idea of what the malware does before we even like launch it. But right now what I want you guys to do is I'm going to close this. I'm going to click activities, click files. And I'm going to go to my downloads and this is where I put the sample one and I want you guys to do the same and once you guys have the sample um, I want you to right click inside of the file explorer or file system whatever you want to call it we're going to right click and it's going to say open in terminal and what do we see we see it already takes us to the file uh, location so I don't have to keep clicking and then um, I'm going to do ls we're going to unzip this right but for you guys, there is going to be a password and the password is infected all lowercase. For me, there is no password because I do not feel like typing in a password. But right here, um, I'm going to do unzip and then uh, I'm going to grab the file name and do this right here. Paste it in and then we're going to click enter. And what do we have? We have a folder. I'm going to close the terminal. Right here, we have sample one, right? I'm going to click inside the folder and then we have a malicious document called baddoc.doc. I do not know why it is named that, but I guess that's the name. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click inside of it again and click open in terminal right here. I do LS and there it is. I'm already, I'm already here, but you guys can do change directory directory or CD, whatever you guys want. It's up to you. But right now what we are going to be doing is we're going to be starting the static analysis phase. The first command I'm going to run and I want you guys to run this too. It's going to be MD five sum. And then we're going to have the name of the document. You guys can also do a uh, SHA-256 sum. And then you guys can do the name of the document and paste it in. But right now, I'm going to grab the MD5 hash. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to put it into this website called VirusTotal. So let's do that. So I'm at VirusTotal.com right here. Uh, and what you guys want to do, there's three tabs, right? And I'm going to go to the search tab right here and it will let me put a file hash. It says that right in there in the box. I'm going to right click and paste it inside and let's see. Okay, this is bad. It says 47 security vendors in two sandboxes flag this file as malicious. That is horrible. And it gives us the file size right here. And then uh, right here is the date of when it was last analyzed. If I want to analyze it again, I click this uh button right here reanalyze file which I'm not going to be doing and then it gives you the file type right here you see the circle it says doc right there and this website is really good for doing static analysis because it tells you the behavior of the malware before you execute it and we see all these security vendors that are uh, flagging it flagging it as malicious we have uh, let's see uh, we got Bitdefender that's probably one of the best antiviruses out there that is free and let's see we got uh, let's go to details tab and then we see uh, MD5, it already gives it to us right here. And then we see in here, same thing. And then we have SHA-1, SHA-256. We have history, when we have creation time, when it was first created, uh, first seen in the wild, and then first submission and last submission. I think that's that has to do with uh, when it was first submitted to virus total and when it was the last submitted to virus total. And then we have a last analysis that basically is talking about uh, this arrow right here. If I click that, then the time will update. And then let's see. Okay, these are the names that it was given. You see one of the names is baddoc.doc. And we have another name called maldoc.doc. I do not know why. And then we have importantdocs.doc. So many names for this. But yeah. And then, okay, this is probably going to be the best tab you guys want to see. Relations. It says contacted IP addresses. So basically that means when this Microsoft Office document executed, it contacted these three IP addresses below right here. And then bundled files, uh, there's nothing there. And then we have drop files. So when the file was executed, it dropped uh, these files right here below, but we don't see anything. We only see a PowerShell right here. But yeah, and it shows you a graph right there. But we have behavior. I think behavior is probably like a really good tab as well to look at because it shows you the sandbox report. We scroll down, it shows you DNS resolutions, IP traffic, basically the same thing we saw in relations. It shows you files that were dropped right here. See, it gives you a better uh, detail about it. And then the reg registry set keys right here, our registry key set. And then we have process tree. And yeah, you guys can read that on your own. And then we go to community tab. This guy gave it a minus 55. He really did not like this document. 
and we have a lot of stuff here. We have sandboxes like Thor, and then I think VM Ray is also uh, a sandbox, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, I think Thor is a sandbox too. I'm not sure, but these guys usually uh, comment on these things. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's go back. So, um, what you guys want to do is minimize this, and we're gonna be going on to the next uh, phase of static analysis. We already ran through the hashes. Okay, and the next tool we're gonna be running is called XF Tool, and XF Tool is gonna basically show us metadata about this document, and it's gonna be really important once we run this command because this command will show us like crazy information. Let me start it. Three, two, one, go. All right, what do we see? We scroll up. We have uh, the file name. And then we have the directory. There's nothing there. Then we have file size. And then we have file modification date and time. That was in 2017. And then uh, the bottom two are today. So don't worry about that. And then we have file permissions. And then we have file type as a doc. And then we got the file extension doc. MIME type uh, application slash MS Word. And then language code is Russian. That is weird. That is suspicious. Why is it in uh, Russia? Unless like uh, you're doing business with them. But in this case, it is uh, not something we would want to see. And then we see uh, system and then uh, Word 97 and then no. I'm going to keep scrolling down. Okay, template. I want you guys to pay attention. It says dot M. The M right here. Let me see if I can highlight it. I can't highlight it, but you guys see it, dot .m, it, that basically means macro, right here, m, I, I'm highlighting it right now. And then we scroll down, and then we see the create date, and then a modify date. And uh, we also see heading pairs right here, there's Russian text, and um, there's nothing else, oh, right here, Microsoft 97, 2003. Remember, this is gonna be really important uh, for later on, but I'm gonna save it for now. I'll explain why it will be important for uh, the later videos. But yeah, so overall, I did see some suspicious things. We saw Russian right here. And then uh, the create date was 2015. And then the modification date was 2017, which is weird. And then I saw a dot M right here. And then, uh, yeah, that's basically it. So like I said, um, XF tool is going to give you a lot of information. But sometimes you won't see anything. And in other times, you'll see a bunch of information. So make sure you pay attention to this tool and don't miss out on it. All right, the next tool I'm going to be running is called strings. And then I want to add this command dash n5. So this command right here will basically show me strings that are greater than the length 5 or equal to 5. So I can do I can remove uh, 5 and put 10, but I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna do five because that would get rid of all the other useless uh, pieces of strings that are in there. And then we're gonna add the name. All right, before I execute the command, I wanna go over something. When I do st strings on uh, a malicious Microsoft Office documents, I wanna look for a couple of things. I want to look for IP addresses. I wanna look for websites. I wanna look for domains. I wanna look for file locations that are suspicious. I wanna look for malicious files. And I wanna also look for malicious code like base64 or visual basics in this case. And yeah, we're gonna run it in three, two, one, go. All right, what do we have here? All right, let me see if I can find anything suspicious. So I start from the top. Remember, you, uh, I uh, specified that I wanna see strings greater than five, right? And right here, it's, this is greater than five. You guys can read that. But let's keep uh, scrolling down. So um, uh, let's see. I see VB, so obviously there's visual basics in this. So if there's visual basics, that means there's gonna be macros in this case. And then let's keep going down. I see a, a location right here to the temp directory. I see C users temp. So this is gonna be playing around with my temp directory. And what else do we see? We, we see select from Win32 operating system. That is also a command we should be looking out for. And then what else? Select. Yeah, we see the same thing. We see echo off. Yeah, we're, we're seeing a lot of code in here. And then we see uh, that's not an IP address uh, that I saw on virus total, was it? No, this was something different right here. I didn't see that. Maybe it might be an IP address, so watch out for that. And then I see uh, 2.2.1.1. Was that an IP address I saw? No, I didn't see that. It might be an IP address that VirusTotal they can catch on. We keep scrolling down. 
and then uh, what do we see? We see an IP address 1.3.1.2. Nope. Let me see. Uh, yeah, this this is weird. We see the temp directory again, and then we see go to and then loop. We see loop again, and whoa, whoa, what is that? 91.220.131. I did see that somewhere. We go back, and I see it over here. But the problem, the problem is that the last number is missing, 44. So yeah, so this is like a part of the IP address. We keep scrolling down. Uh, what else do we see? OBJ XML HTTP dot open, and I see if if obj xml http dot status equals 200 then and then uh whatever we'll execute we'll execute keep scrolling down yeah i see a lot of code over here guys and this has to do with visual basics and we uh we keep scrolling down i see end if um yeah we see the same thing we see url wait so you guys see that it says url equals and then right here and then it says file equals users app data local temp oh whoa what do we see here we see a user agent so a user agent string right here that is really weird especially in this case like why is there a user agent string in a malicious office office document uh but yeah what else do we see scripts uh yeah i see vbs file path start sleep oh start sleep dash s 15 yeah these are commands of like malware but yeah, you guys can read the rest on your own. You guys get the idea. We see a lot of malicious stuff in here. Let me keep scrolling down. Um, this stuff is, uh, I think that is, yeah, that's not anything to worry about. That's something else. All right, but yeah, you guys saw everything. So we saw a lot of strings that were malicious and they're inside of a Microsoft Office document. And yeah, so I can conclude that this thing is doing malicious things on my computer. Like you saw a user agent string. We saw the IP address that it was contacting, but we saw only half of it. Oh, I forgot to see one more thing. We see ping. Oh, we did see that IP address right here. Let's go back. Oh my God. We see the ICMP right here. It's pinging to that uh, IP address right there. Yeah, that's crazy. Make sure you guys look into the strings uh, like very deep because you'll see a lot of good stuff. You guys know what I mean. And then what else do we see? auto open oh auto open basically means when you open up the document or enable macro something else would uh, execute in the background that's what auto open means i will be going over some terms that you need to watch out for when we're looking at macros and visual basics but yeah so that's basically it for this part um let's keep going on to the next tool all right the last tool i'm going to be running through is called zor search let's type it out so Zora search and then let's put the name of the document all right what does this tool do so what this tool does is it looks for encrypted strings and it tries to decrypt it for us and give us an output in this case i want to find any um, encrypted strings that would give me a website url if i were to decrypt it so let's add http and let's press enter in this case we found nothing um, the first URL is legit openxmlformats.org. If you guys see that, don't worry about it. Everything else is just uh, pieces of strings that include the word HTTP. And you guys can add any other word to the end of it. So uh, you guys can just put URL or whatever. But in this case, uh, I'm not going to be doing that. But remember, if you guys uh, see... I didn't get much of an output from this and that's okay some documents may give you a lot of stuff other documents may not give you any information so let's keep going so the next command we also want to run with zor search is called uh, dash p let's erase http and the reason why we're going to be running this command is because we want to see if there's any embedded executables inside of this document so let's press enter and we found nothing all right guys uh, remember this tool can do a lot if you guys want to learn more about the tool let me see uh, let me press enter and it'll give you a whole list of commands you guys can run but I'm not gonna be doing that I just ran over the basic commands you guys need to know when analyzing or doing static analysis on these malicious documents I hope you guys enjoyed the video 